the Defender Maasai panoramic sliding windows. First, I'll apologize because I did not position the camera correctly for this first part or for many of the parts. I didn't have the Bluetooth working on my phone, so I didn't know which way the GoPro camera was pointed. And I was very excited to get this thing done. Um, I went over to Select Auto Body, which is a great, great body shop in Pompano Beach, Florida. And uh, Kim is the owner and his wife, Teresa, and uh, Kim's from uh, the Netherlands. And he has probably worked and painted more Defenders in South Florida than anyone in the last four or five years. He let me use his paint booth where uh, he guided me in drilling out all the rivets for the window on the passenger side, pulling it out, uh, cleaning the area. Then he helped me uh, position the glass just to make sure that everything was fitting properly. Uh, all of this was, of course, while we were waiting for an actual professional team of glass installers that he recommended that had done a lot of work on Defenders before. And since the panoramic glass from Maasai is basically just like a windshield, the way it's made, it's a straightforward job for any competent uh, glass installer. So here I am on the driver's side, going through drilling out all the rivets, just making sure that the drill is straight. And I grabbed the drill bit, I don't remember the size, but it was exactly the size that I needed to just break the tip off the uh, rivets. So a lot of times you'll see me moving over to the left of the screen, I'm just taking those little round tips, uh, like those little washer discs that end up on the drill bit after you drill out a rivet off the drill bit itself. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Just take your time, drill out all the rivets. By the way, I'm using the Bosch angle drill. That thing is amazing. Todd over at Select Off-Road in Lakeland, Florida turned me on to that. I had to take a picture of it when I went over there. He's the one I purchased my two front Puma doors from. And those later model roof sides, I got those from Ken Jagolta over at Surfside 4x4, which is coincidentally on the other side of the yard of that body shop right there in Pompano. Kenny's a good friend. Uh, I think I've been friends with him for 20 years. We used to go off-roading together back in 2000. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Actually, just wiping everything down. And just getting ready to uh, pull the glass. Now, those two suction cups uh, handles, I got those at Harbor Freight. Well, worth, I think it was like $10 for both of them, something like that. Some remnants of the rivets were still being left behind, but they just popped out, no problem. By the way, those windows are on their way to Uncle Doug in Virginia at the moment as I record this voiceover. So there were still some pieces of rivets left in the holes. Now when the window is not in the hole, it's very weak that metal is very flimsy. Like the window is part of the rigidity of that roof side for sure. So just going through, take your time, remove all the rivets, make sure there's nothing, nothing there at all. Make sure you know, anything, any burrs or anything, you can just sand those off with a small file if you need to. I grabbed some pliers in order to remove some of the rivets that were still holding on for dear life. That's Kim. Now, Kim has done this many, many times. Kim's the one who lifted the roof off, took the roof sides off, the previous roof sides that were on the original ones from 88, and put these on. That was just a job I didn't want to tackle. There he's showing me how to properly use a dolly by supporting the back area of the, uh, of the metal so I can hammer in any kind of little dimples and imperfections that happened from 
uh, pulling the window out and having some of the rivets still partially in the holes. You want to make sure that it's really smooth, that you've smoothed out everything because you want that glass panel to adhere, especially around that opening. That's what's going to make it waterproof. Just take your time, little by little. He handed me a dolly and a hammer. I think that was my hammer. I brought all the tools I could. I didn't want to impose on him too much. I didn't want to take too much time. It's quite the history, Ken. He used to paint big rigs in the Netherlands. That's quite the job. When I met Kim, he had an entire, like, large scale tractor inside the booth. Like, it just barely fit inside the booth. It looked like a dinosaur stuck in there. And the owner, I think it was yellow, like one of these big caterpillar things. And uh, it was like a large, pallet lifter and uh, the owner wanted it painted like this deep purple with custom graphics on it and everything and like the shirt that he's wearing says uh, you paint anything it's true <laughs> he paints anything he did a great job it took like eight or nine days and it was done there I'm just at. at first I started using some mineral spirits to wipe it down but then I noticed that that was not the right thing to do then <laughs> all I needed to do was use like just a rag and some water and just take the majority of the stuff out I didn't want one drop of that mineral spirits to end up on the new paint he painted uh, the quarter pounds so here I'm pulling a, you know pulling a, a line of tape and Kim was like, wait a second, no, no, no. <laughs> you have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> let me show you. Here, let me break this off. Let me hand it to you. You hold on to that. It's like, you stick it on, you know, firmly, and then you can just pull. Make sure it's stuck on right. Then you can just pull and tack, pull and tack. I, mean, I know you can't see what he's doing, but his line was way better than mine, way faster. I just use that extra strip to make it a little bit thicker that's experience for you and then he kicked the driveway so we presented this side let's see just to make sure that there were no like manufacturer imperfections or anything you never know There and we're like, yeah, this is nice. This is gonna look great. Because the glass installers are gonna arrive and they're gonna expect a nice clean surface. They're gonna clean the inside of the window. They're going to make sure the surface is good. They're going to put a primer on the surface, a primer on the window, and then that's it. They're going to, they're going to slap those things on. Let's see. Why didn't I cut this part out of the video? Oh, why are we coming back? Did it make any? I forgot. Oh, we're coming back. No, I'm on the outside. I guess I wanted to look on the inside or something. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's I remember. I'm just trying to make sure that it's all sitting real flush to make sure that the panel doesn't need any. Uh... Oh, there. Hi, Teresa. That's Kim's wife. it off and wait for the installers the installers were there for like 40 minutes they were just on fire they saw what needed to be done and 
and they knocked it out of the ballpark. Shortly after I did mine, Ken did the same uh, same job on his TD5, and it came out fantastic. His TD5 is so sexy. So there I'm pulling off the inner belt on the seal of the back window and the battery on the GoPro ran out and I also thought I was in time lapse and I wasn't and that's why the battery ran out. And then pushing it out, pushing the window out and I finally got it out. Here are the installers. They come in, they measure, they put the primer, they put the glue, they're done. They're done on that side. They taped it up. All right. Now, and they went to the other side, to the driver's side, measured it all out. Boom, that part's done. Now they gotta do the two small back windows. Which I'm sorry I don't show in the video. And they packed up and they're done. And uh, Kim's still working on the Mustang over there. Locked me in there so I wouldn't get that much dust. And I started putting the interior trim back and uh, that's about it. Thanks.